Hi guys, my name is Becca and welcome back to another video. Today I have another, or well my last recently read video uh, for April, uh, for the Owl's Magical Readathon. It's the last day of April, it's April 30th, and I'm, I'm done. <laughs> like, I've already completed all my owls, which was great. I am going to have a end of the month wrap up to wrap up, like, everything that I did, the books I, what books I read for what challenge, and just everything in general. But these videos are just so I can actually kind of go into depth for a little bit of the books and, like, really talk about my feelings because the end of the month wrap up, I don't want it to be too, too long. So I'm really only going to talk about like what I read and how I felt about them, but I'm not going to go into detail what they're about or anything like that. That's what these videos are for. So let's talk about the books that I read for the last week of the Owl's Magical Readathon. So I read The Weight of the Stars by Kay Ingram, which is uh, a companion novel to The Wicker King. This is for my astronomy owl. And this one... Okay, so this is a contemporary science elements, at least that's what's marketed as by the author, though there is uh, some sci-fi in this, just the fact there is like a space ex exploration, they go past Pluto, and that's something we really haven't done, so that's why the sci-fi is kind of relevant. Um, but this is about a female-female romance between Ryan and Alexandria. Uh, Alexandria is, uh, the daughter of one of the, okay, how do I say this? Um, so there was this, sp uh, space exploration, like I said, uh, they chose a, like, um, a select few, uh, like 17, 18 year olds that were just going to go out in space and they were never going to come back. This was a one way trip. Um, but then something happened and one of the chosen few, um, got pregnant and had a baby. Alexandra is that baby. Um, and she's never met her mother. She's never been able to see her, which was really, it's really sad. But yeah, she's never going to be able to see her mother again. Or she's never going to be able to meet her mother. Um, Ryan meets her at school, um, and... Ryan is, uh, asked by one of the teachers to sort of befriend her and, like, bring her into her group because Ryan is really known about, um, for finding the people that nobody really wants to, you know, finding the people that don't really want to be around anybody, they just want to be left alone, uh, and Ryan is really good at, like, finding them and just befriending them and making a part of her group. Um... Ryan's mom used uh, worked for NASA before she died, and so Ryan uh, really has um, uh, you know feelings for space and stuff like. That. I am like I really suck at at synopses. You guys know this. Um, so when she meets Alexandria, and knows who she is. They sort of at first it's like really they hate Alexandria hates her. She wants nothing to do with her. Ryan is just like fed up, that kind of thing. Um, but they do start to tentatively become friends, and later on, it does sort of develop into this romance. It is very slow burn. Um, there are it's a cast of characters, it's not just about Alexander and Ryan. You do get to meet uh, Ryan's uh, brother Jamie, who I love. Uh, you meet the other people of the group, Thomas, uh, Ahmed. And Blake they all have their stories they you know they're all just amazing and I love I love this group of friends that's the biggest thing that I really enjoyed from this was the group of friends um, you do get to see some characters from the Wicker King I was really happy about that though I feel like I didn't get enough of them and there were things that were talked about but weren't explored entirely with them and I was a little upset about that because it's like, I do want, like, you know, there's a reference to something, and I'm just like, that's it? Come on, tell me, what's happening? Keep going, tell me, I need to know. And it, it just never talked about again, and you never see them again. And I was a little upset about that. Um, but I really love the female, female, 
at least I love the idea of the female-female relationship. I love queerness in books, I really do. There's a polyam relationship that I really like. But I just feel like with young adult novels, I'm not loving the female-female relationships as much as I want to. <sighs> this is what I was really, like, worried about talking about. Because I don't want to get, um, you know, blasted with hate. Because I love queerness in books, and I do love a good female-female relationship. But I feel like for it's not for me in young adult. Because all the young adult books that I've read that center around a female-female relationship, I have not enjoyed. Um, I read Once Goes to Twice Shy by Alyssa Cole, which was an adult female-female relationship, and I really loved it. Um, just something about that was, like, really good. But I've read Leon the Offbeat. I've read The Weight of the Stars. I've read, um, Song of the Dead. Which you guys know, I didn't personally love that one. I read, um, what's the other one? Oh, uh, Girls of Paper and Fire. And all of them, I... I either like like the book but I don't love the relationship or I like the relationship but I just feel like it's not done as well as it could be and that's the problem I have with this it was so slow burn and by the time we got to anything of a relationship I was just I was underwhelmed I was really underwhelmed I really love the angst between them but once it actually gets you know into being a relationship, I was just not really satisfied, um, especially with what goes on at the end. I was just, I was left really disappointed, and I ended up giving this like a 3.5 stars. I, I'm really sad because I know Julia Bert Pages and Bentha loves this, and she cried so hard at the ending, but I couldn't. Instead, I was like actually really upset, like anger, like angrily upset. I wasn't sad, I wasn't crying, I was ready to throw this book at a wall. It was that bad. Um, I wish I could have loved this, I really do. Um, if Kate Ingram comes out with another book that features Jack and August, who you know I love, from The Wicker King, I think I'd rather have that. But I didn't love this. Though I did really love the characters, and I thought the plot was, was okay. Um, but I think the biggest thing for this is the sense of family and the sense of friendship. The French, the friend group in this is fantastic, and uh, Ryan's brother Jamie is fantastic in their like really their relationship. And the fact that <sighs> Ryan, her parents died um, years ago, and so she's been taking care of her brother by herself, and also his uh, this baby he brought home. And it's just, their, like, little tight-knit family is just so good. And I love it, but I didn't love this as a whole. So it's, it's a 3.5 for me. Um, but yeah. Okay. Um, and then I read the Avatar Last Airbender and the Last Adventures. Did I talk about this already? I feel like I talked about this already. I probably have. I didn't look up if I did or not. I forgot if I talked about this in the last one because I can't remember if I read it like the last day. Remember I was reading it. I want to say I did read it. I want to say I did finish it. So I probably already talked about this but I give it like a 4 star I think. Like a 3.5 4 out of 5 stars. Um, I think I've already talked about this but I did enjoy it. And um, I really did like the scenes from... Uh, the scenes that we didn't get in the show, but we got in here, that were, you know, like, um, like the background scenes, uh, that I would have really liked from the show that I didn't, that I didn't get in the show. So, yeah. I think I've already talked about this, but there it was again. Uh, oh my god. Sorry, my nose is just really itchy. Okay. So, next up, I finished Crown of Feathers by Nikki Popretto. I listened to this on audiobook, and I highly recommend the audiobook. I thought it was really well done. Um, this one, we follow a few multiple perspectives. Um, we have... Uh... Okay, so do you remember when I was having a really hard time telling you what this was about the first time I was trying to tell you? Yeah, I'm still having a really hard time. 
So, 16 years ago, there were these, uh, or there was this queen, well, there was these phoenix riders, and this queen, um, and she was fighting with her sister, there was, like, a war, um, and then they all died, and all the phoenix riders were pretty much, like, taken out, um, and so now the empire rules this place, even though we really don't know shit about the empire, uh, much. Um... So it's 16 years later, and we follow Veronica, who uh, has always dreamed of being a phoenix rider, and is trying really hard to find these phoenix eggs. Um, and then her and her sister Val end up do finding these phoenix eggs, and one of the phoenix eggs hatches and bonds with Veronica. Um, but then Val does something really inexcusable, which I was... I was not prepared that scene. So there is a trigger warning for animal death, which I was really not prepared for. Um, but yeah, it, it really hurt. Um, so Veronica ends up leaving Val and trying to like make it on her own, trying to find another phoenix egg, hopefully, you know, to bond with another phoenix um cause she really wants to be a phoenix rider even though phoenix riders are pretty much extinct though she does find this hidden sect of phoenix riders <laughs> they're just like there um and she finds out though that they only accept boys no girls so she has to um disguise herself as a boy in order to join these group of phoenix riders, like these group of hidden phoenix riders. Um, and then we follow Tristan, who is on another perspective. He is one of the hit, he's like the son of the commander of this hidden phoenix rider uh, sect. And him and, Ver him and, well, Nick, but Veronica end up becoming really close friends and there's something kind of building there, which I really like. Tristan is a phoenix rider, he has a phoenix. Um, and I really love Tristan. I really do. We also follow Sev, who is a son of two Phoenix Riders. By the way, the magic in this is Animage. Um, that's what they're called, Animages. Um, though you're a Phoenix Rider if you can, you know, hatch a Phoenix and bond with it. But you're an Animage if you can, like, connect with other animals. Uh, Sev is an animate. She's the son of two, uh, former phoenix riders. They died trying to save this village. Uh, and he ran away. He just could not handle everything that was happening. Totally understandable. Uh, and he ends up joining the Empire as a soldier in order to just... He doesn't want to join them, but it's either join, like, pretend you're, you know, disguise yourself as somebody else, like, pretend you're not an animage, and hide who you are and just join the Empire and doing exactly what your parents are trying to stop, or let out that you are an animage and become a bond servant. It's not, it's not really good choices here, but, yeah, he ends up becoming a soldier, and then he ends up, um finding out about this plot by these other bond servants, uh, which I'm not really going to go into, but there is this plot, um, against the Empire, I'm just going to say that, and he ends up helping them there, or maybe kind of being blackmailed into helping them there. Um, I really, really love this book. Okay, I gave this a 4.5 out of 5 stars. This was so well done. Uh... The ending, okay, I didn't call it completely, I called most, like, I called half of it, but that other part, I was just like, shit, okay, like, I thought it was something else, but no, it was, ugh, which is, it was great, I loved it, I, I loved this book so freaking much okay this was so good so well done i loved it there's also use of like shadow mage in this which shadow mages are people who can 
like get into other people's heads and maybe control them it's not good but it's so good I I just love this the writing in this was gorgeous I am gonna just tell you what the back says it says I am a daughter of death from the ashes I rose like a phoenix from the pyre I freaking love that quote okay it's like my favorite quote um Oh my god, the dedication in this was so good. To my mother, a red-haired warrior queen who taught me not only how to fly, but also how to fight. I love the dedication in that. I just, I love this book a lot. And I gave it a 4.5 out of 5 stars. And this is definitely going to be on my list of favorites of the year. Because this was so good. So good. And I can't wait for the sequel. Oh man, I can't wait. Oh, um... This one was for Transfiguration, to read a book with red on the cover. Lots of red. Also, this one was, I think, I, again, I think I mentioned this in my last one, but this was for uh, Arithmancy, or Arithmancy, however you say it, um, to read a book with two or more writers or authors. And since Avatar Last Airbender is written by, or created by Brian Konietzko and Michael De Dante DiMartino, that's how that works. Again, I think I talked about it in the last one. Okay, so next one I'm going to talk about is The Blood Spell by C.J. Redwine. This is the last book I have for the owls. This is the final book I had to read to complete the owls. This one was for uh, the very first one, Ancient Ruins, for um, to read a retelling. No. Yes. Yes. This was that. Yeah. I read a, a couple of retellings this um this month, so I wasn't sure if that's exactly what it was. But yeah, this was for Ancient Runes to read a retelling. So I completed all the owls. I was really excited. This is the last one I needed. This is the fourth and final book in the Ravenspire series, which is so upsetting because I love the series so much. Um, this one is a Cinderella retelling following Blue. Um, so she has magic in her blood, but magic is forbidden in her town or in her city. Um, and she, there's also a lot to do with alchemy in this, and she's trying to turn metal into gold so she can help the homeless. Uh, so no magic, just alchemy. Um, but then her father is murdered, and she is taken custody over, or by this, uh, this woman who is pretty much a stepmother, the evil stepmother of the story. And there are the stepsisters as well, though they don't really have that much of a role to play. But, yeah, there are stepmothers. Um, or stepsisters and a stepmother. And, uh, so she has to do with them, who have taken control of everything she owns. And then there's also her childhood friend. Well, not exactly a friend. Uh... Her family has been friends with the royal family for ever since she was young. And Prince Kellen is a guy that they haven't exactly gotten along since, you know, they were young. But, I mean, they were sort of friends. Though, she is really good friends with his sister. Um, which I love because his sister is mute. I really love the use of disability in this. Um, I just love that, that it was represented in this because, again, like, CJ Redwine just is so good with, like, surprising me. And I love the fact that, you know, one of our characters was, uh, you know, represented with being mute. Uh, and there's lots of sign language and there's lots of quotes in here. <laughs> I mean, I love Kellen, and I love how he stands up for his sister, and it's just so good. Uh, but of course, Kellen is the crown prince of Balavada, which is where they live. He, his father died a long time ago, and Kellen has just come back from school, and so he has to take the throne and, you know, rule his kingdom. But before he can do that, he also has to find, you know, he also has to... Mary. So he's trying to find a betrothed. Um, he has to go through all of the daughters of the head families and pick from there. 
but obviously you know, like, if Blue is Cinderella and Kellen is Prince Charming, I mean, what? It's so good. This was fantastic. I remember I was like 15 pages into this um, when I first updated you guys, and I was just like, eh, it's okay, like, I'm not really, like, loving it. I, I read like 10 more pages and I was like hooked. I couldn't stop reading. I, one that, um, there was a time where I left this book at work on accident. I left my bag there and I was screaming because I was so close to being done with this book and I was at a really good part. I was so upset, but I, I love this book. Okay guys, I give this five out of five stars. This was fantastic. There, it's still like this dark and brutal world. It's got magic. Um, it is a Cinderella retelling, so there is Cinderella and Prince Charming, but they also have to go through the evil stepmother, and there's also a, uh, a blood witch in this, I think is what it is, which, uh, is not good. That's, like, you know, there is a little bit of a twist, uh, especially with the blood witch. Oh my god, that was so well done. I, I just really loved this book so much. And the representation was so well done. Um, at least in my opinion. I don't know anything about being mute, obviously. Um, I don't know anyone who is mute in my life. But I feel that this did a really well, uh, a really good job with it. Again, that's in my opinion. I'm not entirely sure. If, if you read this and you don't believe so, let me know. Um, but... So good. So good. Five out of five stars. I absolutely love this. Okay. Now, the last three books I'm going to talk about. The first, well, they all have to do with, you guess it, Dark Hunter. Um, these are the last books that I've read. Though, this one I've not entirely read. This is a currently reading. But, yeah, we'll talk about that. So, let's talk about Dream Hunter and Dark Side of the Moon by Sherilyn Kenyon. The next two books in the Dark Hunter series, I want to say it's, what, 10 and 11? I think this is 10 and 11, right? Because I think Unleash the Night was 9. So I think this is 10 and 11. Okay. I screwed up and I read Dream Hunter first, and then I read Dark Side of the Moon. It's technically Dark Side of the Moon, then Dream Hunter, and I knew that, and I totally forgot about it. I totally forgot that I didn't read this before reading this. Which, it's fine, because you don't technically need to read this to read, or read this to read this, or vice versa. Like, they have nothing to do with each other. This is the first Dream Hunter novel. I mean, technically. And this is a Dark Hunter novel. So, you do need to read the other Dark Hunter novels to read this. And the Were Hunter novels. Like, they all coincide uh, in this one. This one, on the other hand, doesn't do anything for the story. It just gives you more of an insight into Dream Hunters. So let's talk about this one really quick. Uh, this one is about Artikos, who is a Dream Hunter, or he's Scoti, which means that because Dream Hunters don't have feelings, um, their emotions were taken away from them a very long time ago by Zeus because of a prank that was pulled by other Dream Hunters. It, it was a big thing. Um, and then also we have Megara. Uh, who is human. Her father has been searching for Atlantis for a very long time, but when he dies and he begs her on his deathbed to find Atlantis for him, she ends up having to do that, even though it was the last thing she really wanted to do. Um, so pretty much this starts off with Artikos and Megara in their, in her dreams. Um, you know, I mean, obviously this is all like smutty, sexy, you know, times. So, yeah. They're having like sexy times in her dreams. And that's pretty much like how they meet. And then she, um, or Artikos ends up making a deal with Hades to become human. So he gets brought to the human world. Megara finds him even though like he's about to die. Oh my god. And he ends up trying to help her find Atlantis and prove that it's real, though they're hunted down uh, by other dream hunters f when they find out that Artikos kind of broke the rules and, you know, made a deal with Hades to become human. Um, 
in exchange for two weeks of being human, uh, two weeks of being mortal, he has to give up, like, a, a soul. He has to return home with a human soul. And, uh, yeah, that soul would be hers. When I first read this, I gave this five stars. Now, upon rereading it, I give it, like, three. It's not the greatest book. I had a lot of difficulties reading Articos or Eric, um, who I hated. I hated him so much until the end. I thought he was a freaking prick. I could not stand him. Um, I don't like Dream Hunters. So if you've watched my, oh no, this is going up before my May TBR, but I do have the next books in this, um, uh, in that video already. Uh, because I knew I wasn't going to get to those. Um, and one of them is a dream hunter. Or actually, two of them are dream hunters. And I don't think I'm going to like them. Because it's a dream hunter. And I don't like dream hunters. I really don't. I read the... I think there was a novella before this that had to do with dream hunters. And I didn't like that much. Which I think was in this. Pretty sure it was in this. I think it was Phantom Lover, right? Yeah. Yeah, it was Phantom Lover. Yeah, it's V. Aiden. I didn't care about that much. Um, I didn't care about this one much either. Three stars. The romance was fine, though for the most part he was just awful. And Megara could have done so much better. Yeah. Did not care for that one much. Though this one, on the other hand, Dark Side of the Moon, which... I completely, okay, when I went into this, I remembered a little bit of this. I remembered who the characters were, I remembered, like, how they met, and, like, you know, the romance and everything. I remembered the struggles, all of it. I remembered much of this. Oh, one thing I really loved about this, Hades. Yes, give me Hades. I want more Hades and Persephone. That was fantastic. Also, cats in this, which I really also liked, and Apollini is a lot, is in this a lot, too. That's pretty much it. Everything else was just whatever. Dark Side of the Moon. Um, I remembered nothing of this. I didn't know who Raven was. I didn't know about their relationship. I was just like, I remember that I read this, but I don't remember anything about it. I thought this was a were hunter because, I mean, his name was Raven. And I was like, is he a raven? Like, is, does he turn into a raven? And it does say he is a were hunter in the back. I forgot that he was the first were hunter, or the only were hunter, to become a dark hunter. <sighs> Damn. <laughs> okay. It, it, like, once I figured that out, I was like, yeah, I'm probably gonna love this, because it's a freaking dark hunter were hunter novel, and I love dark hunters and were hunters. So freaking good. Also, he turns into a cat. He turns into a leopard. So. Yeah. Actually, is he just like a, a cat, or is he... See, that was, like, never really explained as much. They call him Leopard Man. But does he just turn into a leopard? Or... Can he turn into both? Whatever, I'm pretty sure he's a leopard. I'm pretty sure he's a were-leopard. Um, so this is about a uh, raven who is a dark hunter who was betrayed, uh, killed, and then brought back as a dark hunter um, to take vengeance and then also to protect humans from daemons who are, like, the evil vampires. Um, someone, this is based in Seattle, which a lot of the other Dark Hunter books are based in New Orleans, so this was a nice change of pace. Um, this one, uh, is about Dark Hunters are being hunted in Seattle, and nobody really knows who's doing it and why is this happening. Though you do find out and, I mean, yeah. Okay, I could see that. I could see that coming. Um, humans are working with the daemons to hunt the dark hunters. Which we have an issue with. Because they're like, shit. Daemons can't really go into people's houses. They can't really do anything to, like, you know. Like, that's why daemons and dark hunters... <sighs> Like, Dark Hunters only hunt daemons when daemons are actually, like, feeding or anything like that. 
Damons don't go like, up against Dark Hunters because they're gonna lose. Um, but if humans are helping, then we have an even bigger issue. You know, humans can, you know, uh, can bring this, like, can get into the house, uh, lift the blankets, bring the sunlight in, and, you know, just watch you burn to a crisp. There is a scene in a jail cell. One of the Dark Hunters was brought to jail. Oh my god. That hurts so bad. Just reading that scene, or just reading what had happened, I was just appalled. Oh my god. Um... Yeah, I mean, that's the biggest thing. Like, the humans can do what demons can't, and Dark Hunters can't hurt humans. That's, like, the one code. You don't hurt the humans. So it's not like they can stop them. Um, so we follow Raven, um, who has been taken by humans, uh, to be brought to the demons, um, but... Since he's in cat form, he's in a uh, vet, in, you know, he's at the vet, being locked up. Um, and Susan, our main love interest, our heroine, was, used to be, like, this, the best reporter. Um, but then, like, something happened, which, the one thing I didn't like about this is that they didn't go into what it was or anything like, I guess it really wasn't that big of a deal, but come on, I mean, something. And that was the one thing I didn't like about that. I was like, okay... What happened to her? Like, yes, she was on a case. She had all of this, like, evidence and everything. And then it turns out that, like, this wasn't at all what she, like, thought it was. And since this was such a big ticket case that she was reporting, you know, she was, uh, she lost her job. She lost everything. Um, and she had to go through, like, multiple lawsuits and stuff. But they don't tell you, like, what the case is or anything like that, which I guess is understandable because it really doesn't have any bearing on the story, but I would have liked to know. That's just me. Um, so now she works for this, like, uh, this paper that, you know, is just, like, all about the, like, crazy stories, like, killer moths and alien babies and stuff like that vampires. She doesn't believe in any of that, but she has to report it. <laughs> um, and she's on this case and she ends up finding Raven. Um, and then she ends up getting stuck in this whole world that she knows nothing about, but she has to have a crash course in. Um, and she's also being haunted by the demons because of her now association with Raven. Uh, Yeah. This was fantastic. I love this. I love it. I cried so hard with Raven's back with his backstory. It just it just hurt and the fact that him and Susan are just so alike in that in that regard um because they really don't have any family that they can turn to like they're alone and yeah, it's just it's so cute and I loved it. Um this is great. I gave this 5 out of 5 stars. I love this book a lot. <sighs> so of course this obviously didn't have anything to do with owls. Those are just books I wanted to read extra. I already finished my owls. Um, the currently reading book that I am on is of course Dark Bites. I never did finish this and I can't really finish it because there are some stories in here that are later on in the series. Like there are some novellas that I can't read until I get further down. Um, or further into the series. So I'm only reading the ones that I can read. Um, technically I should be reading the Lords of Avalon novellas that aren't in this. Uh, I did order the first Lord of Avalon, um, book. It's technically by Kelly McGregor, but that's Sherilyn Kenyon's pen name. Don't understand why. I don't care. But that's all to do with, like, King Arthur and Merlin and Knights of the Round Table and stuff. Which, obviously, like, I love Arthurian legends so much. And the fact that Sherilyn Kenyon has a whole series to do with King Arthur and shit like that. I mean, give me that. Um, though there's only, like, two books and then there's another one called The Wager. I ordered the first book. It's just on my Kindle because you can't really get it in paperback. And then I ordered The Wager that you can only get in paperback. So I ordered that. That's coming to me. Um, but the second book in that series I can't read yet. Those, though, you don't technically have to read until you get to the Dragon Trilogy. Like, Dragon's Bane, Dragon's Sworn, and something like that. Um, 
so I can't, I haven't read those yet. Those would be like new, newer reads for me. Um, so yeah, so there's nothing I could do about that. So I did read one of the stories in here, which was Winterborn, which follows Dante and Pandora, which Dante and Pandora, you, okay, you meet Dante in Unleash the Night, with, which is Ren's story, which is one of my favorite books. Uh, he's a werepanther. Yeah. Yeah, it's a werehunter novel. And it's all set during, like, this convention, this dragon con. Um, and it's all about how Dante meets Pandora. And Pandora's in heat. She's a werepantheress in heat. And he's he's a single werepanther that, you know, hasn't had a mate yet. It's really all it's about. Um, though she was taken from her time and brought back to another time by other Werepanther uh, Categorians. And she's running from them and she's trying to get back to her time and she needs to find Asheron, who is at Dragon Con with Simi, which I love. But also Dante is there with his uh, brothers and that's how they meet. And the, yeah, and their romance blooms. It's just so good. Uh, it's a novella, so it was only like 50 pages or so, but I freaking loved it. Like, that's getting five stars. I love it so much. Like, it's, it's my favorite in this, in this bind up. Um, I read just like what, like a couple of them? So, so far I've read Phantom Lover, which was the, uh, Dream Hunter one that I didn't like. I gave it like three stars, maybe like a 2.5. Um... What else was I? Oh, where where angels feared to tread, which was one that I had no I freaking idea what it was about, like at all. Who the hell is that guy, and what is going on? That and I give like two stars. And then I read a Dark Hunter Christmas, which is about Simi and Gallagher, who is another Dark Hunter, which I really loved. I gave that like four stars, I think, maybe five. I'm not entirely sure. I can't remember exactly what I gave that one. Though, of course, it was the next one after Winterborn. Because they're not in order. Like, you have to... Yeah, that was only, like... I don't know. Here. I'll show you. So this is where this one starts. That's how big it is. Can you even see? It's, like, 15 pages or so. It goes from... Hold on. It goes from... Okay, it's, like, 20 pages. It goes from 293 to 315. That's it. Um, that's A Dark Hunter Christmas. Though I loved it because it has Simi and Asheron. Though maybe I give that like four stars. Winterborn though I gave five stars because uh, that's Dante and Pandora. And there's Asheron and Simi. And it's so good. So good. I loved it. So that was all I read for this week guys. I know this was so long. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. And I will see you again in May. Bye, guys. Happy reading.